following my little trip to Harrods last week and immersing myself at the Audemars PK boutique and their Code 1159 chronograph, I had an opportunity to get my hands on its older brother, an opportunity not to be passed on. I present to you the Royal Oak chronograph. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. This channel is about me and my watch collecting journey. An amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, always looking behind the watch for the story and helping similar like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now before we get started, hit the like button if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe. Only a small percentage of viewers of these videos are subscribers and subscribing not only means you won't miss any episodes, but your small contribution really helps. As always, please engage in the discussion after the video in the comments section below, where you'll also find links to my Instagram and some helpful hints and tips and the tools I use to make these videos. What we have here is the 41 mm Royal Oak chronograph in steel with the blue Grand Tapisserie dial. You'll see from the close-ups that this watch has been loved and enjoyed. The owner's only had it a month or so from new, but has not held back and been on some great adventures with it already. The footage was shot at my desk in the office as I don't feel comfortable taking this one home given the value and hence the mysterious brown desk. Now I'm no expert in the AP brand and I'm sure I'll only skim the surface of the importance of the brand and some of the feature sets of this particular watch. Now, I welcome comments that can add to the story. Introduced in 1972, the Royal Oak was the first or at least most famous integrated bracelet style sports watch that Gerald Genter penned and later picked up by Patek Philippe in the Nautilus and many more thereafter. This watch was a hit from day one and is now a godlike status, being almost unobtainable in stainless steel. AP don't make a lot of watches per year, but those they do are hand finished with care, using mainly traditional methods. AP is situated in the Valle de Joux in the heart of the Swiss watchmaking region, one of the oldest fine watchmaking manufacturers. Since 1875, AP remained to this day in the hands of their founding families of Audemars and Piquet. Now this is top end watchmaking at its best with prices starting north of 20k, so not for the everyman. Although, as we'll learn later, things do come to those who wait. AP are proud to show off their processes in these video shorts. Well worth a look through the back catalogue where you won't see many automated processes, just skilled hands honing their craft. The chronographs were introduced in 1993 in the more rugged offshore range, a discreet and very popular line with many special editions that appeal more to the avant-garde and those looking for a bit more wrist presence. Roll on to 1997 and the introduction of the chronograph model on the regular Royal Oak. This latest model was released in 2017 and brought with it some welcome updates to the dial layout for its 20th anniversary. In stainless steel, model 26331ST comes with blue, black and white dials with contrasting panda and reverse panda sub-registers. Naturally, this watch can also be had in precious metals with a variety of decorations and strap options. There's also a 38mm version available in a more classic size. In the same 41mm case, there's also a date-only model. But for my money, I'd stick with the chronograph. If you must have the three-hander, unless you have the wrist for it, the Jumbo 39mm is the best bet although you'll need to be well connected or have deep pockets to get into one. This, however, is my subjective view, having never worn either model. So this is, to some of you guys out there, a grail watch. Not one of mine, but I do warm to it, as you'll hear later. It's expensive at list, and even more on the grey market. Getting any Royal Oak at list is like finding a golden ticket in a Wonka bar, so I do feel privileged to be able to do the review on this one, and I hope I'll do it justice. So let's address the elephant in the room first. This watch is advertised as 41 millimeters, and if you measure across the octagonal bezel, it is indeed just under 41 millimeters. However, if I measure as I would any watch, and in this case, my Speedmaster, I measure the extremities of the case, excluding pushers and crown. And in this instance, measuring across from 10 o'clock to four o'clock, this watch weighs in at 43.5 millimeters. 
Lug to lug we have around 51 millimeters, although there is a fair amount of flair to the bracelet, but not the jutting out solid end link as you'll find on a Rolex. These dimensions are similar to my Omega Planet Ocean, and at the top end of what I could wear on my six and three quarter inch wrist. The 11 millimeter thickness brings us back down to earth allowing for a nice, flat, cuff-friendly experience. The case itself, as you'd expect, with the now very familiar eight-sided Gerald Genta design with integrated bracelet, the case is brushed all over other than the bevels and edges that are sharp and cleanly polished. Being a sports chronograph, this one has crown pushers and guards, as you'd find on a Speedmaster, with the pushers nestling inside hexagonal stacks. These don't screw in or out like they do on a Daytona, and add a little more protection to the polished pushers, although I feel they rob the owner of some tactility. The crown itself is hexagonal, continuing the theme, with a signed and polished end cap. This crown screws down, but neither improves the overall water resistance of 50 meters or aligns the AMP vertically, something Rolex owners will be familiar with. The brushed mid case appears to be the meat in the sandwich between the classic bezel and the case back. Those perfectly aligned screw heads fixed on top and secured from the rear. There's no display case back here, instead the matching octagonal closing plate has a media blasted centre with the raised and polished Royal Oak signature. This is a refreshingly plain rear with only a serial number to break up the look. Being one of the first, you'd expect the bracelet to be one of the best. Now I don't have many points of reference, but it's certainly robustly engineered. The bracelet is brushed all round with polished edges and bevels as on the case. Just holding the watch, the links have a lovely silkiness to them, and they play with the light with a glistening effect, where the light catches the polished edges. This one isn't sized for my wrist, so it's difficult to judge overall comfort, but I'd be worried about those tightly spaced links with my hairy arms. Although there's a contemporary 18mm clasp, the bracelet tapers dramatically from 27mm from that first link width. There's no on-the-fly adjustment, but we do have a very robust butterfly clasp with twin pushes and a signed closing plate ensuring only one way of closing. Moving on to that dial, this is what AP refers to as a grand tapisserie. This is cut using a pantograph lathe using traditional techniques to create the pattern, effectively scribing the brass base plate similar to cutting the key for your front door. And this is where the value is, where any prospective buyer should be aware of the craftsmanship involved, rather than the just the me to approach. The blue dial has rhodium plated sub registers with the minutes at three o'clock, the hours at nine o'clock and this constant seconds at six o'clock. We have applied white gold indices and hands, both filled with a little white luminova to cement the sports watches credentials. There's an applied AP logo with the full brand name beautifully printed underneath. There's also a discreet date window at the 4.30, very reminiscent of the El Primero. And I'm glad to see that the date wheel is color matched to the dial. There's a lot of date haters out there, but for me, it just makes the watch a more compelling everyday wearer. Now decades old, Calibre 2385 is derived from the Frédéric Piquet Calibre 1185, which can also be found in the Vacheron Constantin overseas so in very good company at the top table. This is an automatic winding chronograph movement, featuring high-end touches like the column wheel and vertical clutch, so you can leave the chronograph hand running without fear of wear and tear, but it only has 40 hours of power reserve. It beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, matching that of the Omega Speedmaster, but where the Speedmaster now has hacking seconds, the Royal Oak still does not. Now the only thing I noticed when setting the second hand, it tended to jump forward a few minutes when I pushed the crown in, now this happened a couple of times and I hope it's more of a feature than something to worry about. And given this watch was purchased on the grey market, I wonder if there is still an opportunity to extend the two year factory warranty. I doubt it. When in the AP boutique, the lady referred to the investment value of the watch when I inquired about the retail price. Now investment can be a contentious word in a watch collecting community. But when it comes to Royal Oaks, your money is probably pretty safe. Now this watch was bought on the grey market, and although chronographs have not seen a stratospheric increase in value relative to the three-handed jumbo, it does hold a premium over list by some margin. Looking at the graphs from Chrono24, it's clear the chronograph is on the steadier trajectory, and you could argue is better value if a Royal Oak is on your shopping list. Clearly buying at the top of the market is a risk with anything, and who knows how much more this madness will last. Talking to the owner of the piece, he wanted a Royal Oak for a great number of years, and just saved like crazy. This is no baller, just someone like you or I who had a plan and he stuck to it. He had a few bumps on the road, but his persistence and single-minded approach paid off. And given how he has loved and enjoyed it up to now, I see no sale on the horizon with this one watch collection. My first impressions of this watch was that it was too much money for what it was. 
And there's plenty of reasons why that's probably the case, given the value of the gold Code 1159 I tried on for similar money. The design has its flaws. Not many, but the design and feel of the pushers is definitely one area I think needs some work. But the dial and the detail is superb and the attention and quality comes through in spades. But you know, these are not items to be bought because it makes sense. These are items of desire, grails for a lot of us. And the pleasure the watch gives its owner is not measurable in grams of steel and gold. I had a long conversation with the owner recently about why this piece, and he's not aware of the craftsmanship that went into it. He knew they were scarce and he knew AP was a top tier brand, but his desire was at an emotional level rather than one of an enthusiast. I think with a little help, I hope he will disappear down that rabbit hole as he fills his spare time watching the AP Craftsman expertly cutting the dial on that pantograph lathe or hand forming the bracelet. You know, we need another watch bore in the office and I think we have a good candidate. Now, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this style of video. This means so much to the channel. Please leave any comments, especially if you've experienced the Royal Oak. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, I'm Andy. This has been the English Watch. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.